Are you a literature lover? Are you tired of reading literature that does not resonate with our time? Do you have questions about literature? If so, welcome to the podcast My Two Cents World, the platform that discusses literature in relation to our times. I am uniquely Kenyan and relevantly African, hence my focus, African literature. In this video, I will be giving a quick glance, part two, on newly released postmodern African books. Hashtag postmodernist reality in African literature. Please listen till the end. You will definitely have food for thought. Let us tell you. <clears throat> the first postmodern book is Blood Fist. The Complete Short Stories by Malik Mostadroff, translated by Alice Guthrie. It is prudent to state that the writer Malik is a renowned feminist icon as far as contemporary Moroccan literature is concerned. She has shown her undying passion in addressing the gender and sexuality concerns in North Africa. This is to say, Blood Fist is not any different. It is a short fiction of 14 stories that add to any reader's interest and tying the issues of sexuality, hidden desires, absence of choice, and gender norms. The stories unfold the glimmering pain of characters, from a breastfeeding mother flirting on the internet, to an intersex sex worker, to a young man grappling with desire itself, not forgetting a teenage girl suffers through a dystopian rite of passage. A man with kidney disease makes desperate attempts to to secure treatment, and a mother schemes to ensure her daughter passes a virginity test. Wow. What concerns. The second postmodern book is a biography of Khan Thember, The Making and Breaking of the Intellectual Stotsi by Sifiwe Mahala. This book gives insight into who Khan Thember was as a person and a renowned South African literary journalist for Drum Magazine and author for his best known classic book. The Suit. Oh, by the way, The Suit was banned during the apartheid regime. Hmm. Kanthemba died while in exile in Swaziland, 1967, and this biography explores in detail Kanthemba's social, political, and intellectual side. If you have no idea who Kanthemba was, hmm, it is high time you grab this copy. The third postmodern book is Green, Size of Our Alien Planet by Neil. I must say, this is the first poetry collection I have come across that passionately communicates about the need for us to put everything on hold and take care of our environment and the beauty it beholds. The message in the points is a personal desperate plea to stop environmental destruction. A moment to ponder on the abundant lush land we lived in before we destroyed it. Nonetheless, it is not too late, my people, for us to change and give our planet the size of healthy relief. The fourth, the fourth book is by a Kenyan writer, Troy Onyango. For what are butterflies without their wings? The title is quite provoking, isn't it? It is a collection of 12 stories that centers center around the theme of loss. Weird enough, I wonder why Troy's 12 storylines are all, always, um, yeah, always evoke a sense of loss. Is it a question of personal experience or just an author's obsessive interest? 
In one of the stories, a sister loses a brother. In Sunset Dreams, a mother loses her teenage son. In Origami, the protagonist loses a part of his face. In this little light of mine, a character lost the use of his legs. Wow, lost everywhere. The fifth postmodern book, my favorite one here, Bridges Are for Bunny by Bina. Do you actually think bridges are for Bunny? Would you compromise your peace of mind to keep a secret? How far would you be willing to go to safeguard this secret? Or are you the one who burns bridges at a given moment? Assuring yourself what's the worst that could happen? There you go. Bridges are for Bunny is a tale of three women, three secrets, three lies. The story encircles one woman named Gigi, who is at a betwixt with a friend on one hand and a sister on another. It was on the eve of Valentine's Day where she couldn't take any longer. Off to eye roll moments. Grab a copy. The sixth book is On Rotation by Shalene Obuabi. As the subtitle text says, life doesn't come with a prescription, medical drama people. This is a story that literally brings to life the notion of all hell break loose to a once perfect emblem of who a daughter should be. One who has enrolled to an elite medical school, oh, with perfect credentials by the way, one who has snagged off a handsome lawyer as a boyfriend. One who has surrounded herself with a gaggle of successful loyal friends. What a daughter. To say the least, all the boxes have been checked out. Until suddenly, everything started falling apart. A picking time to reconsider and reroute. It is such a relatable story in our contemporary society. Oh, do you remember the medical drama series Grey's Anatomy? Right. The seventh postmodern work is Why Do You Dance When You Walk by Aburhaman Waberi. The title is an innocent question from a little kindergarten girl who doesn't understand why her father is limping. As the father answers the question, the reader gets to understand the outpour of emotions arising from the childhood memories of the character. It is indeed a heart-rending confession of a father who explains his disability to to his daughter. Very sad. The eighth postmodern book is Truth is a Flightless Bird by Akbakar Hussein. First things first, watch out for the movie. It's coming out soon. Truth is a Flightless Bird is a crime fiction novel set mainly in Nairobi, Kenya. The story opens up with this American pastor by choice, Duncan Barnardo, who picks up his old friend and college crush named Nice from the Nairobi airport. Oh, secretly, Duncan cannot know that Nice is fleeing her life choices and her UN job in Mogadishu. Nice believes she's too nice, too innocent looking for anyone to suspect that she's mulling drugs. On the other hand, the character Shiro is a middle-aged woman who is overly desperate for her son's affection and is ready to kill for it. One key thing to note is that this nice has a Somali boyfriend who is a drug lord. The Somali boyfriend has an associate in the Kenyan police service. Duncan Kerr crashes on the way back from the airport. He awakes and finds himself captive. The climax unfolds with each character's truth in tow as a confirmation that truth is indeed a flightless bird. It actually 
never goes anywhere. The second last book is Sex After Hamilton by Osaji Benedict. Do you recall the recent TikTok trend of Dubai Pota Poti? Hmm. A current reality check of how far we have stretched our immorality. Sex After Hamilton is a true insider where the sometimes shocking world of netting and dating habits gets exposed. The author takes us into the lives of the young and beautiful. Last but not least is My Life is a Chameleon by Diane Anyanko. The writer takes us through the real meaning of finding your place in the world and knowing that you deserve to be there. It is a story of struggle to fit in and belong. Those are my 10 newly released postmodern African books. That's all I have for you today. Kindly subscribe and share this podcast with your family and friends. Thank you and see you next time.